In this video, we're going to learn about the three major historical periods of Rome, as well as a pivotal moment known as the Roman Civil War, as waged by three men who forever changed the world. The three major historical periods of ancient Rome consist of the Kingdom of Rome, the Roman Republic, and the Roman Empire. The city of Rome is still the capital of Italy today, and its people, as you may know, helped establish one of the most influential cultural and linguistic diasporas in the history of the world. However, all things must come to an end, and Rome officially fell in 410 AD. Let's take a look at some maps so that you know exactly where it is in the world that we are discussing. Here we have the United States, which hopefully you recognize. In Europe, we have Spain, France, Germany. And down here, sticking out into the Mediterranean Sea, we have Italy. A peninsular nation, Italy had ready access to the vast amount of resources in the Mediterranean and took full advantage of their proximity to Europe, Asia, and Northern Africa. You may have read the Odyssey about Odysseus's wanderings after he and the other Greeks defeated the city of Troy in the Trojan War. The Romans have their own story of a hero wandering the Mediterranean Sea where the Trojan Aeneas leads a group of men away from the burning city and to a land that allows them to stage the beginnings of Rome. Once Aeneas gets settled, which involves killing and enslaving a lot of natives, and Alba Longa gets going, we get a line of non-hereditary kings, beginning with Romulus, of whom you may have heard through the legend of Romulus and Remus. The story says that these twins were raised by a lupa, which is the Latin word for she-wolf, but might also have meant prostitute, which is a far more feasible, though somewhat less romantic, way to look at the story. Eventually, one family of Romans, the Tarquins, tried to make the throne hereditary, but the people aren't willing to allow that much power to lie with one family. A whole string of events leads to the removal of the kings and the instatement of elected officials. The Republic is considered a sort of highlight of democracy in history. However, like in the early United States, the popular vote was basically controlled by landowners, and the narrow margin of people who fell into the select category of Roman citizens. One notable feature of the Roman election process was that officials could not hold office for more than one or two years, and then could be re-elected for non-consecutive terms. Setting up the election and tenure process in this limited manner is a reflection of the Romans' fear of one group having too much power, a sentiment carrying over from the overthrow of the Roman kingdom. Enter Julius Caesar. This man is born in a time when Rome is focused on limiting elected officials through brief, non-consecutive terms, as we discussed, and making the government large enough that no one area had too much power. Luckily for Caesar, he was a talented general and a statesman in a culture that celebrated military victories and intellectual savvy. Rome was constantly at war with its neighbors, looking to expand its territory and sitting on the brink of a shift to empire. Such ambition and a national mindset gave Caesar the opportunities he needed to ascend in the social, military, and political ranks. So, this man Julius Caesar won a consecutive series of victories over a long-time threat to Roman peace of mind, the Gauls. He also held the highest elected position of consul, only two of which were elected each year. Along the way, he aligned his politics with two men, Crassus and Pompey, who held sway over financial and popular aspects of the Roman people. If you didn't know, many of the most important events in politics take place outside of the public eye. These three men, Caesar, Crassus, and Pompey, ended up thrown together in positions of power such that they were able to run the government unofficially, so that political and military decisions worked in their favor. This is also a sort of corruption we see in politics today. Wealthy and powerful people behind the scenes sway events to work for their own agendas. And, just like with the series of Roman kings, nothing lasts forever. The death of Crassus created a power vacuum within the triumvirate. While Caesar is away at war, Pompey begins spreading rumors about Caesar. Caesar, having many allies, hears of Pompey's subterfuge and decides to return to Rome with a standing army in order to obliterate Pompey's power. The reason that entering Rome with a standing army is a big deal is because the Romans had declared the Rubicon River on the border of Italy to be a sort of line of peace, where generals were required to disband their ranks of soldiers so as not to appear to be marching on Rome. However, Caesar defied this tradition, maintaining his army and marching on Rome. A civil war is any war where a country fights against itself, and that is what happened with Rome. 
Pompey fled to Egypt, where Caesar's young relative Mark Antony beheaded him, and Caesar was celebrated as victor. Despite the rules that consuls could only serve two consecutive terms, Caesar was elected and served as consul four consecutive times, and then the people attempted to crown him emperor for life. However, the men in power realized that they were reverting back to absolute rule and felt that that did not bode well for their profit margins or influence. Thus, they assassinated Julius Caesar, but underestimated his ally Mark Antony, who was later crowned emperor as Caesar Augustus. While the elected portion of the government still ran, it was more of a figurehead for the sake of popular peace of mind and maintenance of tradition, rather than a body with real power. Arrogance overtook the Romans and their spread throughout the known world. While they were busy spreading Roman culture and conquering Europe, they were also having a harder time managing outlying colonies. As more Roman soldiers left Rome to defend Roman colonization efforts, the city itself grew more vulnerable and fell to northern tribes. While the Roman Empire itself ended, the legacy it left and the role that the Roman Civil War played in its rise and fall are invaluable.